Bon a la cal, mi amores. The story of the Trump-Russia investigations just keep getting more and more interesting. On the 8th of February, Senators Grassley and Graham uh, declassified and released an email published, sent by Susan Rice, former uh, National Security Advisor to President Obama, to herself as well as carbon copied to Curtis Reed, a member of the national security team, in which she um, describes essentially a conversation with Obama regarding the Trump-Russia investigations and, well, let me read it for you. On January 5th, following a briefing by the IC leadership on Russian hacking during the 2016 presidential election, President Obama had a brief follow-on conversation with FBI Director Comey and Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates in the Oval Office. Vice President Biden and I were also present. President Obama began the conversation by stressing his continued commitment to ensuring that every aspect of this issue is handled by the intelligence and law enforcement communities by the book. The president stressed that he is not asking about, initiating, or instructing anything from a law enforcement perspective. He reiterated that our law enforcement team needs to proceed as it normally would, by the book. From a national security perspective, however, President Obama said he wants to be sure that, as we engage with the incoming team, we are mindful to ascertain if there is any reason that we cannot share information fully as it relates to Russia. And the next section is still classified. The president asked Comey to inform him if anything changes in the next few weeks that should affect how we share classified information with the incoming team. Comey said he would. Now, this is fascinating for multiple reasons. First and foremost, this is double confirmation now when compared against the Page and Strzok texts that Obama was in fact involved in the Trump-Russia investigation, more so than involved, keeping tabs on it the entire way through. We now know that the president was directly involved as early as March of 2016 from the Strzok and Page texts and has continually had meetings with Comey and other people in the FBI to keep tabs on what is going on, which makes this email remarkably strange. Although I don't find it as strange as other people seem to. For example, Fox News is very much, you know, jumping on the train that Susan Rice made a big mistake doing this. I don't think she did. If we go back to the Strzok and Page texts, there's one text that kind of stands out right now for me. And that would be the text sent from Page to Strzok saying that she's upset that blank was flipped. In other words, someone has turned against their political angle that they've been fighting for with the Trump-Russia investigations. And it, it's a very small space, only enough room for four letters or so, and that could be a number of people. Uh, it's, uh, seeing as these people all referred to, uh, to their superiors and such by their first names and nicknames, it could be Bill, it could be Mike, uh, Bill Pristap, Mike Rogers, but it could also at this point, be Rice. Now, Susan is not a name that comes up in the uh, Strzok page texts in any of the now thousands upon thousands of texts that we've seen. But they don't refer to her as Rice either. And while I was very strongly in inclined to believe that it was Bill Priestap who was declared as having flipped in that text originally, I I'm now questioning whether it was him or whether it was Susan Rice. Bill Priestap, unfortunately, is at the center of all of the counterintelligence operations, and it really leads me to wonder what his position actually is. Bill Priestap is a very secretive individual. But with this email, which notably was written not the day of the meeting, 
on January 5th, but rather 15 days later on Inauguration Day, January, 20, uh, January 20th of 2017. Leads me to believe that Susan Rice was doing everything in her power not to just cover her ass, but to make sure that there is a direct line of connection between Obama and the case. There's no reason this email would have come out unless it was basically declassified by herself and provided for uh, the senators rather directly. This email has very little connection to any other communications which have been coming out. And it leads me to believe that Susan Rice, towards the end of the Obama administration, had flipped, had grown concerned. Now there's still the issue of the tarmac meeting in Phoenix, Arizona with Bill Clinton, which we still know very little about. However, I suspect now that Senators Grassley and Graham have directly asked her questions and she will undoubtedly be brought before uh, the Senate to give testimony, we're going to be getting more information about that as well as this email. Because this email, I mean, this email focuses on one phrase, by the book. And if there's one thing we know about this entire situation, none of it was done by the book. They used a, a collection of memos written by uh, Christopher Steele, which were unverified and in many cases unverifiable. They pushed forward a FISA memo basically completely illegally in order to get legal why, uh, well, surveillance on a member of the Trump team and anyone with whom he com comes in connection with due to the broad strokes that Title I gives the intelligence community when it comes to intelligence gathering and surveillance. They have repeatedly shown to have uh, closed door and backroom meetings with the president, with each other, discussing things like insurance policies and uh, plans to essentially assure that Donald Trump does not become president. Nothing about this is by the book whatsoever, which makes this email more and more curious to a lot of people. The fact of the matter is, she didn't write this to cover her ass. She wrote this so that she would eventually be impaneled before the Senate to give her testimony about the fact that Obama was in fact involved. Again, 15 days later, on Inauguration Day, she writes this. Not the same day, which you would normally expect. I mean, if you had a meeting and you wanted to take notes about it, then you would absolutely take those notes immediately and not 15 days later. The only reason to write this at such a later date appears to be for it to come to light should an investigation come out. Now, is this going to give her immunity? I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure she's going to take a lot of the flack, even though this exposes the fact that Obama was essentially, you know, well, okay, this specifically doesn't, but the questions asked by Senators Grassley and Graham will expose just how involved President Obama was. To go to the, uh, the letter that Senators Grassley and Graham wrote, Dear Ambassador Rice, the Senate Judiciary Committee has a constitutional duty to conduct oversight of the FBI and the broader Justice Department. Part of that duty involves ensuring that law enforcement efforts are conducted without improper political influence. Accordingly, the committee has been investigating the FBI's relationship with Christopher Steele during the time his work was funded by Hillary for America and the Democratic National Committee, as well as the FBI's reliance on his unverified third-hand allegations in the Bureau's representations to courts. As part of that effort, the committee sent a request to the National Archives for records of meetings between President Obama and then FBI Director Comey regarding the FBI's investigations of allegations of collusion between associates of Mr. Trump and the Russian government. 
In response, the committee received classified and unclassified versions of an email you sent yourself on January 20th, 2017, President Trump's inauguration day. If the timestamp is correct, you sent yourself this email at 12.15 p.m., presumably a very short time before you departed the White House for the last time. In this email to yourself, you purport to document a meeting that had taken place more than two weeks before, on January 5th, 2017. The meeting reportedly included a discussion of the Steele dossier and the FBI's investigations of its claims. It strikes us as odd that among your activities in the final moments on the final day of the Obama administration, you would feel the need to send yourself such an unusual email purporting to document a conversation involving President Obama and his interactions with the FBI regarding the Trump-Russia investigation. In addition, despite your claim that President Obama repeatedly told Comey to proceed by the book, substantial questions have arisen about whether the officials at the FBI, as well as the Justice Department and State Department, actually did proceed by the book. And now here are the questions that Senators Grassley and Graham presented, all of which are questions I highly doubt they don't know the answers to. They are asking questions that they know the answers to and will proceed toward a, um, well, simply put, a testimony by Susan Rice, which whether she likes it or not is going to be used against President Obama, former President Obama, excuse me. Question one, did you send the email attached to this letter to yourself? Do you have any reason to dispute the timestamp of the email? Given that the National Archives do analyze this kind of stuff, I'm almost positive the answer to these questions is yes and no, respectively. Question two, when did you first become aware of the FBI's investigation into allegations of collusion between Mr. Trump's associates and Russia? Well, we can be pretty damn sure that she was aware around the same time that everyone else was aware, June of, 26, of 2016. Number three, when did you become aware of any surveillance activities, including FISA applications undertaken by the FBI in conducting that investigation? At the time you wrote this email to yourself, were you aware of the October 2016 FISA application for surveillance of Carter Page or the January 2017 renewal? Short answer, she was absolutely aware. She would have been aware on October 21st, as she's a member of the National Security Council, and she would have absolutely been aware of, in the very least, the first application, if not the renewals as well. Did anyone instruct, request, suggest, or imply that you should send yourself the aforementioned inauguration day email memorializing President Obama's meeting with Mr. Comey about the Trump-Russia investigation? This is where the questions start to get good, because now they have directly accused her of creating a memorial evidence that President Obama did have meetings with the FBI and specifically FBI Director Comey about the Trump-Russia investigation, matters under which Obama has lied about at this point. Is the account of the January 5th, 2017 meeting present in your email accurate? Did you omit any other portions of the conversation? Undoubtedly, she did. This email is very undetailed as compared to normal memo, uh, memorandums of private meetings that people take. If you go back and read other documents of the type, they're usually arranged in a much more minutes formed pattern, and they're also usually written at the time. So it's undoubted that there has got to be more to this conversation than she left in this email that will be requested of her when she is brought before the Senate. Other than that email, did you document the January 5th, 2017 meeting in any way, such as contemporaneous notes or a formal memo? To the best of your knowledge, did anyone else at that meeting take notes or otherwise memorialize the meeting? This is a question I really would like the answer to, because if there's more notes, if there is a formal memo, if someone else produced a memo or notes, I would love to see those as well. During the meeting, <laughs> excuse me, during the meeting, did Mr. Comey or Ms. Yates mention potential press coverage of the Steele dossier? 
If so, what did they say? Another amazing question, considering the dossier was released on January 6th, but there was awareness of the dossier being had by news media outlets as far back as uh, the end of summer and uh, the beginning of September. During the meeting, did Mr. Comey describe the status of the FBI's relationship with Mr. Steele or the basis for that status? We're starting to get into much more pointed questions regarding this meeting because these questions will form the basis of indictment against President Trump for lying about his involvement. When did you first become aware of the allegations made by Christopher Steele? If I had to answer this for her, I would suspect that she became aware of the indictments but, uh, as far back as the uh, June or July of 2016. When and how did you first become aware that the Clinton campaign and the DNC funded Mr. Steele effort, Steele's efforts? This is a much harder question for me to answer for her, one I would love the information to, especially because as far as, well, one, even though we are not a party-oriented country when it comes to politics, people are elected individually, the president is still the head of his political party. And as such, the Democratic National Committee funding Mr. Steele's dossier would, I mean, I find it very difficult to believe that Obama would not be aware of their involvement as such. And given that, the, that Obama was so tightly connected to the Clinton campaign, so very supportive of it, I would be extremely surprised to hear that he wasn't aware of these efforts at all. You wrote that President Obama stressed that he was not asking about, initiating, or instructing anything from a law enforcement perspective. Did President Obama ask about, initiate, or instruct anything from any other perspective relating to the FBI's investigation? That's a really, really good question, in my opinion. I'm very glad that was asked. And finally, did President Obama have any other meetings with Mr. Comey, Ms. Yates, or other government officials about the FBI's investigations of allegations of collusion between Trump associates and Russia? If so, when did these occur, who participated, and what was discussed? We can be absolutely sure, absolutely positive, that more conversations did occur between Obama and the FBI, given the context that is um, given to us in the email. Because she does say that the president asked Comey to inform him if anything changes in the next few weeks that should affect how we share classified information with the incoming team. And Comey said he would. This means that there was undoubtedly further meetings that took place that we don't have information on yet. Not, you know, including but not limited to Comey's interactions with President Trump regarding the Trump-Russia dossier. As well as far, you know, far more discussions regarding the fact that Obama was actively trying to keep information from the incoming president in the event that he was working with the Russians, which at this point, we know he wasn't. I can't wait for February 22nd, when is, which is the, the uh, due date for Susan Rice to finish responding to these questions. And I can't wait until what comes afterwards, which is undoubtedly going to be a public testimony before the Senate. Thank you all very much, and I will catch you next time. Mm-hmm.